We'll pick up where we left off on our previous program. Hopefully you wrote another overloaded method for the personal chips method and tested it out. Let's make another method, and we will send it some data. Public static void multiply numbers. This method is going to take four numbers. We'll set them all up as doubles. I'll call the parameters num1, num2, num3, and num4. And this method will multiply the numbers and display what the result is. I'll put the name of the method and its signature down at the bottom. Double, 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 because it takes four doubles. And I'm going to have this method display each number with a multiplication symbol, in this case an asterisk. If you'd like to use an X, you certainly can. So it will show num1 times num2 times num3 times num4, displaying the actual values. Make that one an equal sign. And then I'll let the method do the math. num1 times num2 times num3 times num4. There it is. We'll get the Java doc set up. Notice that it automatically is going to give us four parameters since we've already set them up. A brief description here. It's supposed to display the product of four numbers. And num1, num2, num3, and num4 are each factors. So I'll simply say the first factor, the second factor, the third factor, and the fourth factor. Time to test this method out. Head back to the main method. And we'll activate or call multiply numbers and put any four numbers you like. I'll use some doubles and some integers because since I sent it up with all doubles, it can also handle integers. We'll run the program and, ooh. It's way off to the side. I had a problem back earlier in the part A of this. I forgot to put an LN on that else statement with the negative bags of potato chips. Now we can actually see the display of all four factors and what it equals. We can try this with four more numbers. This method is all ready to go. I'll use some integers this time. 8, 7, 6, and 100. And run the method and get an accurate result, displaying all four factors and the result when they're multiplied together. Now we're going to create another method. I'll go public static void mess with number. And I will send this a number. I'll call it int number. That's the parameter. I'll comment the bottom of this method so I know that it's called mess with number and it has the signature of just int. And I'll have it display what was sent which is going to be number, that's the parking spot for the parameter, so whatever value comes into this method is going to go into number, and we'll remind users what that value is. Then I'm going to take that number and make it equal number times 101. You can do anything you like here, but it's going to alter the value of number inside this method, and we'll display to users what the new value of number is. And again, that's the number in this method the variable number, it was a parameter, but now we've multiplied it by 101 to get a new value. Let's go back to the main method, and we'll explore what's called passing by value. I'll declare a variable called int my number, and I'll make it equal some integer. This time I'll use three. You can use whatever you like. And I will make a note to the users what the value of my number is 
before we call or activate the method about mess with number. So at this point, the value should be 3. Next, we'll call or activate the mess with number method. And we'll send my number. After that method runs, we want to check to see what the value of my number is. Did it also change or did it stay the same? We're about to find out. So before mess with numbers, the value of my number is 3. The method tells me it was sent 3. It turns that into 303 inside the method for the value of the variable number. Just you'll notice after the method concludes, my number back in the main method is still 3. That's passing by value. And when we pass primitive data, such as integers, doubles, booleans, the method that receives those values receives a copy of those values. It can't really access where it is in memory. It gets a copy of it and puts it in its own place in memory. So when the value of number changes in the mess with number method, it has no impact on my number back in the main method because mess with number got a copy of the value of my number. It didn't actually get direct access to the place in memory where the variable my number is holding its value. So the value of my number never changed in the main method. The value of number in the mess with number method did change inside that method. Passing by value, you get a copy of the value, and that's what happens with primitive data.